Are you ready to go, Bonnie? Okay. Sure. Okay. It's hard to kind of to um, change my chain of thought from what we were just talking about with Gracie. I mean, that is just such a complicated case, and um, you just your heart goes out to her. So, you guys are doing amazing work, and it would be good to hear what you guys have done, so we can kind of learn from you mm -hmm. and see what we're doing with our patients as well. But um, one thing did come to mind just now, and that is this um, mental health wellness tips on while people are in quarantine. I don't know if you've seen that, but um, it's through the CDC. It has a lot of really good, there's like 28 tips on this. And usually I kind of just cruise through things pretty quick, but there was a lot of good information in that. Um, I don't know who put it together at the CDC, but it's a mental health wellness tips for being in quarantine. And it's actually really helped me with the work that I'm going to talk about today. And um, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. And you guys, I don't know which tribes you're with, but you guys are probably like us. This was our calendar. It is full of X's. We had 11 different events we were doing, classes. And with all this COVID stuff, everything is off the schedule. So it really required us to really rethink our approach to outreach for our patients. And our number one concern was really um, when all this happened in the initial days was do people have disinfecting materials that they need? What are the things that they might need that they don't have readily on hand? What's in their pantry? What, what are the needs of our patients? And so we were thinking more in real tangible senses. And so we started off with the diabetes care kit. And I believe that you have a picture of that. And basically our care kit just looked like that. It was what we were able to go down to the store, down to our local grocer and purchase. And so we, we just decided that um, we would put in different cold care teas, a little diabetes care kit. We put in cough drops, all kinds of just odds and ends. And then we took that to the pharmacy and um, the pharmacy uh, was a collaboration with them. They would give those bags out when patients came to pick up their diabetic medications. And then um, we had, we did 150 of these kits and we um, delivered some to porches to our elders who live here on the bay, as well as um, to the clinic staff so that they could give them out. So we started doing that. Those were really well received. And um, then the next thing we did was we developed a diabetes educational mail out program. And this is a series of mail outs that we're planning on doing. And with that, uh, we sent a, I put a sample here of the binder that we sent to the patients. Because oftentimes what we notice is when we send information to our patients, it oftentimes goes in the garbage. And so this time we decided, okay, let's send them a binder. Let's give them all our addresses. Let's send them a letter as to what our intentions are and, um, and, and see how they respond to this. So we made this an incentive mail out, meaning that we are, um, we're sending the patients either twice a month or monthly an incentive gift that relates to their health. So, um, we're sending out thermometers right now so that patients can take take their um, temperature. Our plan is to send them um, little oximeters. There's little ones that you can get thrown that are under thirty dollars. There's spirometers. We have um, little like wrist um, pedometers for patients. There's um, foot cream. I mean, we're doing all these things that we're sending to them along with diabetes education. And we're asking them to save that information in the binder. And then at the end of the year, when we have our honoring celebration, we will honor our elders and the people who in our program um, that actually keep and collect this information. And we have special gifts for them for doing that, along with a meal that we'll prepare for them. So the idea is, even though 
we're not able to provide the classes that we normally do in-house, that money that we set aside in our budget for those classes, we're turning it around into things that can benefit the patients at home. So that when our providers call the patients for a televisit or maybe a video visit, they can ask the patient if they can check their blood pressure, they can make sure that if there's any change that the, in patient's weight, that they have a scale at home. We know that they can take their temperature. They know that you know, all of the things, all the different biometrics that we do here at the clinic, the patients can do at home. And so also sending them this information helped us to know when we did our survey, which that's the next slide, I think. Um, we do, it's a survey form and it's actually four pages long. It's a little bit longer than that now. But when I call patients, I call every single person on our registry, which is about 220 patients, give or take. And, um, and I ask them, did you receive the mail out? Did you receive the binder? And, and that way I know that I have the right phone number, I have the right address, and I tell them about what we're doing. But we ask them, you know, I start off with asking them how they're doing with the healthy, um, you know, with the stay home, stay healthy order from the governor. And I talk to them about social distancing and wearing a mask. But, you know, I think the biggest point here um, in all of this is that, that the patients really understand that this is all about their safety that we're doing this because we want them to be safe. We want to know that they have what they need. We're asking them about food, it, what they, if they're eating normally, um, if they say no, we know we have a list of all of the food banks in our whole county where we can direct patients to food banks. You know, we're just asking them very um, specific questions as you can see from this flyer. I just kind of check it off. They don't really know that I'm asking them that I'm filling out a survey. That's not the intent. Um, I just kind of ask them in just a general conversation. And in the end, you know, I ask them about, um, you know, so much that has to do with calling 911 with emergency services. And I asked that in a unique way because when we first started making these calls, I noticed that people would say they wouldn't call 911. And they didn't because of what they saw on TV with people going to the hospital and not being able to see their families. And so we started talking about that. And in discussing things with people, you know, these phone calls end up being about 45 minutes, sometimes even longer. And, but they really needed to hear from us. They really needed to hear that we, you know, that we care about them. They know that, but they needed to hear it again. They need to have that contact with us. Um, sometimes some of the patients, they were, they had so much anxiety about being at home and being afraid that they came in contact or somebody came into their home with COVID and they were afraid. And so being able to help them understand that it's not what they've made it out to be in their minds, that it's actually a process that we've refined and that they can come through our drive through at the clinic and they never even have to come into the building and just helping them to understand the reality rather than what's kind of what they're seeing on TV and believing that's what's happening here when it's not. So there's just a lot of misconceptions that patients have and so spending time with them really does help them to understand that um, that it's not the case. And then on top of that we're collecting all this data. So we have an Excel spreadsheet on the back side of this, on the clinic side. Um, all of this data is being put on an Excel spreadsheet. And so we can figure out how best to talk to patients. Some of our people, um, majority of them have an email address. 
the majority of them do texting. The majority of them like Facebook, which surprised us. And um, to the level, I mean, that that people are doing this. So when I talk to them about live streaming on Facebook, having a closed diabetes Facebook page and um, doing, you know, when we go out to our farm tours or when we have our garden events or whatever we might be doing, even our diabetes educational classes and asking them if they would like to um, live stream that. And even if they can't be with us, they can still join us. I was surprised by how many people want to do that. And we started talking about um, this virtual walk with the canoe with up to, uh, because the canoe journey was canceled. So we're going to walk it and it's like 330 miles. And so you'll notice one of those questions was, do you have a pedometer or do you have a tracking device? And that was why. So we could encourage people to put it to text us their steps and we can track it and in doing that you know um some of the elders have said well how about we walk to alaska you know to their tribe or their village and then others have said how about montana or south dakota so we just plan on doing this big loop and just getting people excited to get out and calculate their steps, send it to us, their family can be involved in that. And it's something we can do virtually and have it be engaging and fun and still at the same time be encouraging, you know, activity. And, but more importantly, our elders, because like I tell them, it doesn't matter if you've walked 500 steps your steps matter to the overall picture of what we're doing so we want you to contribute your steps we want you to be a part of what we're doing and and they and especially it, the elders that have facebook and the others who have a smartphone so you know i think that when it comes to all of these things the data that we're getting from the phone calls it's consistent and because I'm asking every single person kind of the same sort of thing. And out here, everybody's so connected that they're a family. And so they already know, they're already anticipating my phone call now because now I'm up to like the ends or something. So people are excited about it because they don't really have a lot. I mean, what else do they have to do at home right now? They want to engage with the diabetes team. They want to be a part of what we're doing. This is this is what, this pushes us forward all the time, our patients. <laughs> they want more from us. And so that's what we do. We listen to them and I ask them, you'll notice on that survey, I asked them, what do you want us to do? What would you like our program to offer you? Because right now we're gonna be writing our grant for 2021. Now's the time to have input on what you want us to do based on all these new guidelines that we're going to be following due to COVID and how would you like to interact with us and they want to interact on the computer so I'm going to have to get used to more of this kind of stuff <laughs> we're not used to this but we're going to have to because that's what people want they want to see us they want to be a part of it and doing them um, so future steps what our plans are so right now what we've gotten so far um, back from feedback is we're going to do a naturopathic diabetes care kit is our next one it's being made right now and so it has um, some cedar uh, room spray just for disinfecting it has um, an immune system an immune boosting broth and that they can make their own soup with this broth and then also we're doing a some more teas and uh, like a relaxing lavender nighttime lotion that they can use to help us sleep. And then um, some people through calling, they donated us um, over 200 masks for us to give away that one of our patients made for us. And um, we'll plan on doing a fall and winter diabetes care kit as well, trying to encourage people because that's the time we want them to be getting their flu shot and pneumonia shots and those kinds of things. Um, we are also planning on um, 
just presenting the information that we gather to our leadership so that leadership has an opportunity to kind of help us brainstorm some of these ways of moving forward because it's new to all of us. This is new, it's a new way in the medicine clinics anymore. Um, some interesting things, uh, last couple of minutes, uh, some successes that I would consider a success. Uh, one of the, many of these patients, uh, I don't know. Uh, they come in for care, they don't really engage in the diabetes program um, very much. And so I've never met them, but there was uh, one particular person in mind that as soon as I called, he, he came up with this whole uh, anxiety-driven frustration and anger. And, um, and it was all over a tooth that he had trouble with. And he was so upset about it that he couldn't listen to anything that I was saying. I was just a voice on the phone and he was angry and he was in pain. And so I stopped the whole survey. I mean, I stopped asking any questions. I mean, I only did, only got maybe a couple in, but um, when I really li listened to what he was saying and I really heard his voice and I heard his pain, he thought that we were not open to see patients when we are, but just in acute care and emergent care. And he thought that he, because he hasn't had a paycheck in 67 days, he couldn't go anywhere for care. So he had all these misconceptions. And so once we were able to meet his need and we listened to his one problem and we got it solved, he is now this big advocate of everything we're doing. And I would just say to you that sometimes just these phone calls, it's so much work, but it is so worth it to hear what's happening in these patients' homes and what they're dealing with, what their worries are, because that will, we all know how stress affects a diabetic patient, and they really are stressed and they're really worried and so they don't know um but i know that they have their medications i know that they have food and that's kind of the point of this is just to be sure that they know that we care we care enough to call we care enough to listen and to make it happen whatever they need we go find it we deliver it we're really fortunate to have the resources we have. So sharing those resources of staff and of personnel and, and meeting their needs only makes this program stronger because the patients feel that it's their program, which is really what our goal is, that this is a program facilitated by us, but for them in a way that they want it delivered. And that's what brings these people to us. And that's where we're getting the results that we're getting with them. And we were just worried that it's, as time goes on with them staying home, that weights are going to go up, A1Cs are gonna change, we're gonna see some, some side effects that we don't wanna see. So how do we engage them? And this is our attempt. <laughs> and so we'll probably be revamping it as um as the data comes in and as we see it and so anyways we'll share what we learned i feel like i talked too long sorry <laughs> oh that's you didn't talk too long i mean it's just the whole thing is lovely um and i think you know they hear constantly that diabetes is one of the leading risk factors for serious illness with COVID. That has to be terrifying. Um, and the things you're providing is that sense of safety, having a plan. You're giving them the written material. You're giving them the tools and those kits to stay safe. And I think that feeling of safety and, and the connection is just amazing. 
Um, I'm really curious when you're calling people, have they have they looked at the diabetes education material that you've included to go in their binder? It looks like really good stuff. I was trying to use my reading glasses to read that. Yeah. No, and that was an, that's another surprise is that they're they don't really have much coming into the house that uh, or it's the same TV programs or they're tired of that. So that's why we're going to do um, puzzles, word games, anything to related to diabetes. Um, we have some videos that are being made right now so we can send everybody a video. Um, exercises, whether it's chair aerobics, chair yoga, that kind of thing. Um, you know, it's so yeah, they're reading it. They know that I'm calling, which is so surprising. And so yeah, it's it's a new day. <laughs> you know, before oh, yeah. you know things. I don't think they ever read anything we sent them. They're, and they're just waiting for their turn to get this wonderful call. So that's so uh, I don't, yeah. yeah. They're but, so interested. It's my turn now. <laughs> okay. Well, Any other comments or anybody else doing anything like this? But I know we're getting low on time, but this is this is just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to comment or share anything? Mm -hmm. Don't forget to unmute yourself. Star six if you're on the telephone. I know Robin was calling uh, a lot of patients in the beginning to be sure they had prescriptions. I think she, you told me what, over a thousand patients you, you were going to have to call. So that's the other thing, you know, how do you get this kind of outreach done? Um, it's it's um, time consuming and um, you need to maybe have some other people to help you. Um, has anybody else been doing outreach? Meryl? Oh, you can't talk? Uh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I know people are having to drop off now, but that might, this might be um, good themes to share ideas. You know, you get ideas from each other and um, I love the ideas that we've talked about today and shared with each other. Um, phone calls, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody last comments? Okay. Please feel free. I think you guys have my email. Please feel free to reach out to me in between if you need help with a case um, and or or anything I can help you find or look up etc and um, Grace has another case we're starting to work on uh, and we can either present it next month at work on it in between or if any of the rest of you have uh, have cases please uh, turn them in uh, for presentation. And also topics that you particularly want to have be part of the didactic, uh, let us know. The other thing, if any of you can do what uh, Ronnie did is to share what you're doing. I think that's really exciting to hear about. So if any of you would volunteer to share what you're doing during this time, because I think this time is gonna go on lo a lot longer than we expected. I would love to have that be the presentation for next month or even the month after. I think there's so much value in that. So please let me know if you're willing to um, be our speaker next time. Um, and everybody have a great rest of the week and, and uh, weekend. Yeah, I don't you. know. Thank did you, you get your mic fixed? <laughs> oh, Carrie, did you want to say anything? Anybody else? Okay. No, just thanks, everybody. You're all doing a great job in challenge. Yeah, yeah. This is really tough. So impressive. So impressive. Okay. Okay. Nice Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank okay. you for joining us. Don't forget uh, to write that survey, Survey Monkey link on the side. <laughs>
Hey, uh, Don, you mind staying on for a sec? Uh, I mind. Just kidding. I knew you would. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I recorded the session, so um, I wanted to I see if you might help me out with. Uh, here, let me go and pause it. I guess stop it.